laid into the night and finally finished all this paneling this morning. I'm just kind of cleaning things up here. The next step down here is going to be to install the fixtures, but that will come later. Well, today, Joe and I are going to split up duties. He's going to go upstairs and tile, and I'm going to go up to the kitchen and help Dr. Doyne relieve the walls getting ready for the kitchen cabinet. In fact, hopefully we wouldn't get some installed today. Well, I've made some pretty good progress up here on the second floor. The 4x4 four four wall tiles are all in, and they've started on the floor tile. Now, these are 1x1 one one mosaic tiles, and they're in the same jade and almond color as the tiles we used in the basement. And since the log surface isn't perfectly square, I've had to scribe along here and nip all these tiles so that they'll fit. I'm setting the edge tiles just short of the logs, leaving a grout space in between to avoid settling problems. The sheets we're using are pre-spaced for an eighth inch grout line, and they go pretty quickly over the main part of the floor. is a classic style from the turn of the century, and it enhances the rustic feeling we're trying to achieve here in the cabin. Well, that does it for this floor. Now, it's time for the first floor. Now, we've shown you several ways to avoid problems with the settling of laws. Now, we're going to show you one more way as we install kitchen cabinets on these two log walls. Now you can't screw the cabinets directly into the logs because they do settle. So instead, we'll attach the cabinets to this plywood buffer that's attached to nailers, like you see right here, to remain stable as the logs settle. Now we have this wall done already. We'll show you how we did this one on this wall here. Now the nailers get put into notches we cut out of the logs every two feet on center. For nailers, we're using 2x4s that are ripped to the correct width to keep all the front edges flush. And we're using this string line here to help determine what the width of each one of those 2x4s should be. Then we're lag bolting the nailers to the logs. But before we do that, we're cutting a slot in here so the logs can settle without binding on the nailers. nailers up, we can now go ahead and install our plywood on this wall like we did over here. We want this up perfectly plumb, so we'll double check it with level as we go and should we need it. Doctor? We're setting the plywood on top of a 2x4 we have nailed into the subfloor. That's to keep the cabinets at the same level as the mortar bed and tile we'll have in the rest of the kitchen. Now you notice that we've stuffed insulation in between the logs. It'll act like interior chinking and also beef up our R value a little bit. Now to prevent a binding problem when the log cell, we'll be screwing through the plywood directly into the nailers and not the logs. And once we have all of our plywood up here, we can start installing the cabinets. Say, hey, Joe, are you going to be ready to help out then? Yeah, I got just a little bit left here. For our master bathroom floor, we've chosen a mix of Raven and Adobe mosaics. These are going to match our fixtures. The design, however, varies quite a bit from our others, but it's still reminiscent of the late 1800s. I just line up the tiles, push them into place, and set them. There! Now we'll just let the tile dry overnight, and tomorrow it'll be ready for grout. So you're all done, huh? Yeah, what do you think? Oh, it looks real nice. I like your timing, too. Now you can help on the cabinets. All right, I'll be there in a second. We'll begin by installing the upper cabinets, starting with this corner unit over here. Now, the cabinets are made out of birch, and the shaker style we've selected, along with some of the doors here with these wire mesh grills, gives it a real country store to look. The first thing we want to do is pull all the doors off here so we don't have to worry about banging those up. And 
were pre-drilling holes in the cabinet back for securing them. To keep the cabinet straight, we drew in this level guideline, and this is where the bottoms of the upper cabinets are going to hit. And the way we found this measurement is we measured up 84 inches from the highest point in the floor, and from there we measured down 32 inches, because that's the height of the cabinets. And that is where they're going to hit. Can you all sit here? Yeah. Get this in place. Get this up here on the line. Hold on just a second. Let's tell me when you're ready. Okay, it's right there. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, two screws will hold up long enough for us to check it for plumb here. If it needed a little adjustment, we could shim it. But with the plywood up here, we're just fine. Here you go. We're using one and five eighths inch screws. They're short enough so they don't go into the logs, but long enough for good support. We use the level line to position our next cabinet, which is deeper than the first. After securing the back, we screw through its side into the first one's face frame. Then we line up the plate rack unit, which is flush with the second one. Wood clamps hold them in position while we secure the backs and the frames. All right, well we've set in a couple of more cabinets to get us to the end of the row, and these all went in pretty much the same as the first one. However, we did leave a four foot gap right here, and that's to accommodate the range in the vent hood we're installing later. I cut in a vertical notch here to the logs along the plywood, and that should help hide our nailer later on. You all set there? Yeah. Now we special ordered this cabinet with an extra long return here along the backside, which should fit right in here and hide everything nicely. This cabinet is 16 inches longer than the others, which means that its bottom is going to rest on top of the counter. And since we may have to adjust it later on because of this, we're just going to secure it temporarily right now. What do you say we screw this in and break for the day? Oh, I could go for a real nice dinner. How about you? Oh, that would be great. tile's dry, so we're grounding the tile in this bathroom and the one upstairs before we move into the kitchen. Now we're using a toast colored ground here, which would go real nice with the adobe colored tile here in this pattern. What I'm doing is just working it into the lines between the tile here, like so, and then scraping off the residue. Here in the upstairs bathroom, we're using the same mushroom gray colored grout that we used down in the basement. And I'm being very careful to fill in any gaps between the logs and the tile. Well, I'm all done upstairs. Are the shims ready? Yep, yeah, they're all set to go here. I went ahead and installed our 2x4 nailer here to bring the height of our base cabinet up to what will become the height of our finished floor. And the frame of the cabinet we're installing here will form a 90 degree angle with this cabinet underneath the window. So we ordered it with an extended base frame to form that joint. Now we want to shim our cabinets up to the level line that we drew here earlier. Here. Can you push that up? Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Here, let me get this one. All right. And we secure the back to the plywood through the fastening rail. Now, this cabinet arrangement leaves us with a dead space in the corner, but that'll be covered up by a countertop. Well, now, we're ready to install the two narrow cookie sheet cabinets that are going to go on either side of the range. Then we'll just work our way down the row. That gives you a good idea of the steps you take to install cabinets against the log wall. The cabinets along the other log wall go in the same way, and those along the partition wall are installed the same as in any type of construction. 